Well, this is annoying. Um, I've just uh, opened up this Acorn A3020 um, to upgrade the RAM. Uh, you add extra chips in these zip slots here. Sorry about this camera. Autofocus is uh, not particularly good. Um, and I've noticed that uh, around the board there are a few of these horrible little surface mount electrolytic capacitors. Um, like these ones over here. And the problem with those, uh, being mid-90s, is they are prone to leaking. And you can probably see there's a kind of a dark colour on the board around these ones here. And there's another sort of area around this one. And there's one down here. And you can see even the uh, last RAM chip on the end there. The It's kind of starting to discolour and there's um, the markings are kind of faded a bit. And you can sort of see a little bit of corrosion. Um, on this little ceramic capacitor there, sort of its, it's leads have gone dark. Uh, C217 next to that inductor. Um, so yeah, that's really annoying. I mean, these are uh, normal capacitors like the ones in the power supply over here are perfectly fine. They're just standard radial ones. They don't leak. They're all perfectly fine. The tantalums are good as well, but it's just these horrible little surface mount ones that for some reason always seem to leak, um, especially the, like I said, the mid-90s um, just seem to be really bad at it, and I don't know if that's related to the capacitor plague or not because, I mean, these other electrolytics all seem to be perfectly okay and I think it was just these surface mount ones in particular, I'm not sure maybe because they may have been oven reflowed, they possibly damaged or something, the other ones might be wave solder, so I wonder if that had something to do with it. But anyway, um, I'm going to have to take these off and try and clean up this uh, electrolyte that's leaked everywhere and um, replace them. So, yeah, really annoying. If you do have an old piece of equipment that hasn't, uh, somehow miraculously hasn't leaked, um, you should probably rip all these capacitors off and replace them um, if you want the thing to survive. Now, in this case, I mean, it's quite ironic because um, the battery for the uh, clock and everything, which normally leaks and causes a whole lot of problems, um, that was obviously removed a long time ago and has not caused any sort of issue. Um, but these capacitors here are definitely starting to cause a problem. You can see even this little uh, ceramic capacitor down there in between these components has uh, still got quite darkened leads, so who knows. Anyway. So I'm going to uh, desolder those in a minute. Um, I'll show you how that, that works. I personally use two soldering irons to de desolder them. And I find that's the easiest way. Some people just snap them off, but um, I really wouldn't advise that because the the leaked electrolyte could uh, could have weakened the pads and attacked the uh, adhesive t of the copper to the board and that kind of thing. And if you do some sort of physical... Um, trying to pull them off, snap them off, you quite possibly could tear the pads up, so I really wouldn't recommend that at all, I, I find, I mean service mount tweezers should work quite well, I wouldn't go with hot air because that'll just probably make the things leak even more, um, but two soldering irons, just come straight in, use them like a pair of SMD tweezers, um, and just uh, pick up the cap and scrape it off, that seems to be the, uh, the best way of doing it and the least likely to cause damage, so... Okay, so let's uh, try and remove um, some of these capacitors. So let's just start with this one down here. Um, I shall start by trying to add some fresh solder to it. Um, this may not work um, because of the uh, nature of everything being kind of corroded. Um, but I'll give it a go. I uh, see that's going on the side of the capacitor instead of on the actual pin, but... Uh, yeah, okay, that's kind of got there. We don't even care about it anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but... Um, yeah, so we want to get some good heat in here so we can pull it off cleanly without ripping any pads or anything. Um, so you take your two soldering irons and uh, just come in like this, one from each side. So you can do a pair of tweezers, obviously, but this is one way of doing it. And just like, well, there we go, it <laughs> just uh, popped straight off. Um, so yeah, that's one way of doing it. Um, 
Yeah, I was obviously pushing a bit too hard on that. Now, I'll just grab that with my pliers because it's going to be quite hot now. Um, but yeah, there we go, that's come off cleanly um, and everything, so that didn't rip any pads or anything, that's quite good. Um, yeah, it's just uh, making sure everything gets nice and nice and um, liquid in there before you move it. Um, <laughs> maybe don't push as hard as I just did, but there we go. That uh, came off just fine. So, yeah, I mean, you're definitely going to smell it when you heat it up. It smells like kind of rotten fish and cat piss um, <laughs> and various other things like that. So, yeah, not particularly great, but there we go. Um, just getting rid of that. So, I'll just do these other ones over here. Okay, so the board is uh, cleaned up a bit, and uh, it's mostly alright. I mean, there's probably still some residue, maybe under some components and stuff, but um, I've cleaned it as best I can without just, like, completely washing the entire thing, which would be pretty difficult, because um, drying it out would be hard, because there are so many sockets and connectors and things, so I just did the best I could. Um, I just got this toothbrush and drenched it in alcohol and then scrubbed things around, and then I... Uh, Wicked, uh, wicked most of it off with a tissue and brushing this on top of it um, to sort of pick up the excess and then I dried it out with a hot air station to get in under the connectors and stuff. Uh, I did desolder these two connectors, pulled them out and um, cleaned underneath them and that because they did smell a bit funny. Um, there's still kind of a bit of a smell around but it's a lot less than it was and if anything did corrode away, I mean, this is only a dual-sided board, so it wouldn't be impossible to fix. Um, but everything seems pretty good, um, as best as I can do it. I mean, you know, it's a <laughs> it is a retro computer. It's not going to be used, uh, you know, every day or something. It's not that big of a deal, I guess. Um, so yeah, I would have liked to. You know, good, better to run something like this through a dishwasher or whatever and give it a full proper clean, but with all these connectors here and everything, it's, yeah. Um, not the best thing, they, they might start rusting in that and then you have to replace those and, yeah, it's just annoying. Anyway, so, I'm going to put the new capacitors in, I've got uh, standard ones obviously. Um, so these larger spots are 47 microfarad and the smaller ones are 10 microfarad. Uh, all the parts are 16 volts. I've got 16 volt and 47 um, here and I've got the other ones, 10 microfarad, I've got uh, 25 volts, but that's fine. That'll work. So there is uh, not too much space under here. I guess that's why they use surface mount. So I'm going to lay these down on their sides and just have them going on like that. So, I mean, it's pretty easy. We've got the pads just right here. Um, Paying attention to the polarity, obviously that's positive, so this is a negative here. Um, so we just take these and like bend the leads sideways, um, so that they will fit. So first of all, um, if I can get this on the shot, so the first thing I'm going to do is bend the leads uh, like this. Sorry, this is probably not in focus, but hopefully you can get the idea. So I'm going to bend them so that it's like that. And then from this point, I'm going to bend them out, um, so where it would be flat with the uh, 
flush with the body of the capacitor because it'll be lying on top of the board. So we want to get it about there and uh, bend this so that that's out like that. Um, taking care not to rotate the lead and actually break it off the capacitor. So we should have like this, as you can see, and let's do that with the other one. So now we've got the lead sitting out like this. Um, sorry, this autofocus is really bad. Um, so now I just need to uh, cut them off to fit these pads. So probably about there will do. So if I cut that like that. And my soldering iron is still on. So now we've got the capacitor has its leads formed sort of in a surface mount way. If this thing would actually focus, would be great. There you go, you get the idea. And they sort of curved out and down. It's really hard to... Yeah, there we go. So... You can see how I've formed the leads, they come out, they go down, they go sideways. Um, and then I can just fit these, I can just sit this. Um, like here, okay, this, uh, this I see is slightly in the way, so I might actually bend this one. Bend that one a little bit that way and this one a little bit that way so that I can angle it a little bit but there we go, if I just sit that down there like that so it'll be sitting like this on the board um, and I will solder it on like that, so I'm just going to uh, well I think I'm going to have to uh, turn this pad, turn the lead Bring that down here. Just solder that like that. So that's sitting there. Now we can solder that one on top. So yeah, if I just uh, bring this around there, um, you can hopefully see how that's soldered on. So I'm just going to do that for all the rest of them. And uh, and that should be it. But yeah, the importance is to lie them down so they are not in the way. I could have just done that in the production. I don't know why. It's, uh, unfortunately they didn't because then we wouldn't have this problem. Anyway, so I'm just going to put all these on and then that'll be that. Alright, so there's the new capacitors on there. You can see I've uh, laid these ones over sideways to keep them down and these ones I've stood up because they're short enough they can fit. Um, so that's the uh, those four over there. There's another one over here which again I've put sort of diagonally to fit in the space where everything else is. And then I've got this one over here on the edge. Um, which I've also got sideways. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much all done, so hopefully that won't need to be touched for, uh, well, at all. Um, hopefully never again will I need to go in here and do anything else with it. Um, it should last fairly well, so, unless of course something corrodes away. I mean, this uh, ceramic cap right there, like I said, is not the best. Um, if that fails, I don't know what value it is, but we'll... Uh, yeah, I don't think you can get schematics for this version. I think you can get schematics for the A3000, but not maybe this one. Anyway, I haven't had a really good look, but, you know, something like that, if it failed, well, might have to fix that, but... Um, everything else looks fairly good. Um, hopefully I've cleaned it up before any significant damage could occur. Um, so all that's really left is to replace the battery, um, which would have gone here. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll take some wires and... Uh, Run a run a pair of wires across to this uh, area of the board here. This just this clear part. Um, there's nothing there in the case, um, and that would be a lot easier to get to without having to take the top shield off and the keyboard and everything like that. Um, so I'll put like a little plastic tray, I think, 
uh, to put the new battery in. So that's it there. Um, you know, put it in a little plastic tray or something in case it decides to leak um, in the future. So that would uh, avoid that problem. Um, and then just run some wires across the board down to the actual original location because you wouldn't want to leak in here. That's where the floppy drive connects and the, you know, the hard drive is just down here. So you wouldn't want corrosion around here. That could cause a lot of problem. And we've got this big uh, floppy drive controller, I'm guessing. Or whatever it is, we don't want to get any acid around that. So yeah, we should run the whole thing over and put it in a little plastic box or tray or something. And that should be quite good. And that'll mean it'll be easily changeable in the future. Um, and all that, so that should be fine. So now, um, I need to put it back in the case. Um, well, I'll attach these wires. I might add the battery later, I'm not sure when I'll do that, but um, I think I have to, might, might have to charge it first. Um, anyway, I'll do that. Um, I also want to dump the dump an image of the hard drive. Um, actually, that's the hard drive connector there, sorry. It uses the sort of laptop style interface, 44 pin. And um, then I'll add a new RAM, and then we should be good to go. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's all there is to do there. Okay, I've got everything back together, and everything still works, so that's a good start. Uh, so now I want to upgrade the um, memory. So I've got some four 512k memory chips here. They will plug in beneath the keyboard, which I'll have to take off again. But um, just to show you that, uh, how it works. Um, so I've got a hook up here, and if I turn this on... Uh, and I put this over to the other input. We get the uh, computers running. Okay, so let me just... Uh, 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 this camera, seriously. Okay, so... Let's see... Just tell us total 2k 2000k so two megabytes of RAM right and you can see that on the startup screen although I think I missed it because I didn't have the thing set up but there we go okay two megabytes of RAM so I want to upgrade this to four megabytes so we just turn this off okay so if you uh, you pull out these uh, ribbon cables um, you need kind of both hands to pull at both ends, otherwise you'd risk tearing them. They come out through this slot um, in this uh, metal shield here. And then the, you can get access to the uh, extra RAM slots here, right under the uh, keyboard. So there's uh, four sockets there, zip sockets, and then we've got uh, these two jumpers. So these jumpers need to be swapped around, as far as I can tell. I've never actually done this before, so... Let's see, let's grab some pliers there, so apparently you have to pull, let's see, let's get some focus here, this camera is terrible, so you have to swap this one from there to there and swap this one. to the other side. So they're basically opposite of what they are. Now I don't know what the uh, position would be if say you added an extra megabyte um, but if you're adding an extra two megabytes like I am then apparently that's the configuration you want um, according to the internet. So we'll find out if that's correct uh, once I put these chips in. So I'll just uh, install those. Um, got them here in this bag, Hitachi um, chips. You need uh, I believe 70 nanoseconds or better. Um, and that, although the uh, ones already on the board have an 8 on the end, so maybe it only needs to be 80. I'm not certain. HM514800CZ7. So that's a 512k memory chip. Um, so pin 1 is down here on this end, is marked with the number 1 on the side there. If you can see it on the silk screen, it's out of focus, but there's a 1 at the bottom right pin in that. So these are marked, uh, that'll be the pin 1 with the beveled edge on the end, so we want to have them all facing that way. So, just uh, pop them in like that. So 
So insert these chips like this. If it will actually go in the socket. Let's see. There we go. It's a bit tight, but that's good. We want it pretty tight. speaker so put all these in now assuming that these chips are in fact genuine and are in fact good make sure those are all nicely in there okay so I've got my four chips in there now so I now have to put the keyboard back in so let's just uh come out of it here. So I put the keyboard back. And just uh, hang on. Feed these ribbons through that slot. As you can see. And put them back in. Zoomed in there. If I switch this on, we should get four megabytes. Hopefully. Ah, 4096K. That's what it says on there. Don't know if that was in focus, but there we go. So that's uh, that's what you'd expect. So if we just go to here, 4096K. So that's what you'd expect. That's what you want. So there we go. So 4 megabytes. So that is correct. The jumpers do have to be swapped like that. And we do have 4 megabytes. So no errors that I can tell. No beep codes or anything. So that seems to be working. So that's good. Um, so yeah, so now I guess what I want to do is um, load some software on it. So I actually bought these uh, floppy disks here. So I'll use that to uh, copy some stuff and see if the thing actually works. And then all I have to do is just add that uh, add that battery. So if I um, yeah, so I've got the uh, two wires for the battery there. Um, like I said, once I get a little plastic tray or something, I can fit the battery in on its own separate board. Um, I can just stick it in there and can easily change it later if I need to. Uh, I put some nice thick solid core wires there to keep the impedance down. So you know, the lowest, lowest voltage drop as possible because I'm running it all the way across from under the floppy drive but yeah, I don't really want to solder anything on in the corner because then that's annoying to change it or anything so yeah, anyway but there we go, so that's good, so that's working we've got the uh, 4 megabytes in there and everything should be good yeah, but anyway, so there we go, so that was the um, Capacitor replacement on an Acorn A3020 and uh, RAM upgrade and well haven't added the battery yet but that's how I'm going to add it and uh, yeah I can uh, start playing around with this thing and see what happens so there we go hopefully that'll be good so I'll see you next time